if you are familiar with what we do here on the Headspace, we try to shine a light on Africa culturally as it moves forward in its engagement with the rest of the global world. We try to do that mainly through our episodes that narrate the journeys of particular African artists as they, you know, engage with race but also with their own justified right to just be artists in a world where if you're a black artist what you are is essentially a subservient tool to capitalism. Every artist is, but black people in particular, tend to be the mining ground for how culture is reproduced in a white world. If you like that shit, subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, just wait. It gets better. It really does. How does it get better? I want to rave for a moment. I want to rant about the importance of South African jazz in the global jazz scene. We don't often hear this being said in a popular scope. I mean, if you're an everyday South African, Yamazu Prahu, you probably know your Sifo Komete, you know Jimmy Lulu was in there doing his thing with the hat and the glasses. But you've got a very eerie sense of, you know, Jazz Yenzu in South Africa. But South Africa is very crucial to the history of jazz as it evolves. You know, and this is not the episode for that, but this is just me trying to set the ground for the artist whose album I'm reviewing. Because South Africa's role in the evolution of jazz is probably the most integral one in the modern world. I might be biased, but I think I'm probably right. And it is artists like the artists whose project I'm reviewing that just constantly validate that. I am talking about Malcolm Chia, an artist who from the Joburg Buzz emerges as a student of the old school but continuously challenges himself and breathes to us new life through the trombone but just generally the horns of a new world a new world that is necessary a new world that will come through blood through the blast through the force you know a new world that to kind of put it in a Fanonian sense, involves us engaging with the violence in ourselves imparted by the trauma of the world we live in, but the violence that continuously reproduces itself in our psyche. Malcolm is dope because when you play horns, a lot of what you do involves engaging with your literal breath. It's interacting with a person's pace, it's interacting with them as they speak. I mean, in the very same way that Ndia Lord Kakuwe right now, Pamkwako, to play the horns involves a place that is intimately intertwined with your lungs, with your capacity to speak, with your capacity to just, you know, huh, you know, to just put it out there. And that's why, in that sense, the horns are always haunting. Haunting in a sense that is both positive and negative. What do I mean by that? Horns can haunt you towards the inevitable urgency of what you need to do, but they can also place you in a somber place where you mourn for what you have lost. Malcolm Chiane has done that throughout his consistent catalog, and his latest album, True Story, is another testament to that. My God, I love this album. Because it's, it's like a grenade, or like a Molotov bomb. It is a makeshift, simple device that when you throw, has the capacity to destroy everything. Like, I'm serious. This album is very brief, it's very succinct. However, the flames, the emotions, the density, the depth of what Gianni and his trio, um, spelled tree, oh, which, you know, is another reflection of just jazz artists and their kind of uh, beautiful infatuation with metaphor. Jazz is a style that tries to gesture real things through symbol. And a lot of jazz artists use their instruments to symbolically tell the story. You know, it feels weird when you hear jazz heads talk about the emotion, the message, when there are hardly any lyrics. 
But it's there. If you listen to it, the sound is a language. Every note conveys a signature tone. There is a sound to sadness. There is a sound to joy. There is a sound to lust, to blissfulness. And this is, for me, the beauty of jazz. That we live in an era where pop music tries to convince us that you, you, know, you need lyrics for a song to be a song. But jazz continuously becomes the godfather elder that says, no, you don't. You don't. The notation, the composition, is the foundation of a song. By the time anybody says whatever shit on it, it's already what it is emotionally. Chiyane takes us through what I believe is two things. The autobiography of his own childhood. That's why the album cover is literally a baby picture. But it's also the autobiography of South Africa's childhood. It's the way South Africa is growing into itself. And Chiyane points a finger, just like a parent would point a finger at a child discovering themselves. He says, hey, 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 hey. You better grow up because you have no choice. I know it's hard. I know you're still trying to fumble and find yourself. But you have no choice but to figure out what maturity is very, very quickly. Because we live in a world that will continuously undermine your value to be something more than a tool, than a consumer. Sonically, this album is like the lighting in this room. If you get too close to the sun, it feels blisteringly hot. But if you recline, like I am in my seat like a cool motherfucker, you're able to observe the sun as it moves. What Gianni is doing is shedding the light on where South Africa is from a safe distance. Safe enough for people to interact with. Safe enough for people to engage with. This music is hot. And I mean it in a literal sense. The tones here are very low end. The album conveys something that's a little bit like physically, it feels physically deeper and warmer than his previous project. It comes from a, from a very deep place. A deep, warm place that when you get too close feels uncomfortable. But when played out from a distance, you're able to observe and engage with. This is a commentary on South Africa, but in a sense, because capitalism is global, it is a commentary on the world. Gianni also plays around with the idea of singing, or like belting out screeches and screams and, you know, exclamations and chants, you know, that are brief phrases that are really admonishing us to find ourselves. My favorite track in here is a song called Global Warming where the husky, shaky drums are able to converge with like a real deep dynamic crescendo where Gianni emerges vocally as well. After a wild erratic vocal performance, he gives us the grounding. Such a profound question. What is your problem? What is our problem? And I think that is what true story narrates. For me, on a personal level, this is an absolute classic. I'd give it a 10 out of 10. But as a critic, I will say the brevity of it, even with odes to Philip Daban, if you know Malombo, even with odes to Mabr, carries with it a kind of like paper mache unfinished texture to it. There's an emptiness that is enchanting, but at the very same time, you feel like the music needs a little bit more to infuse it with a sense of musicality that stretches beyond an immediate moment. But that is the point of this project. Like I said, it's a Molotov bomb. It's a grenade. And with any explosive, the moment it hits the ground, the impact is what determines the resonance of it. So if you like an album that thrusts you into a place where you are dismembered and deassembled, or for you to come back together again, this is the project for you. I would rate it on a professional level as a very solid 7 out of 10 to a 7 and a half. It is an amazing testament to South African jazz, to a brilliant artist, and to just the fuck, you know, we're dope, man. South Africans are dope. Another thing that's dope about South Africa is the headspace. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. 
if you have, come on now. Tell your peoples, spread the word, because in an era where YouTube is increasingly becoming this extension of advertising, we're trying to do something a little bit more meaningful. So if you fucks with that, Lala Nati, Amba Nati, on this amazing journey, it's all love. They call me VJ the brother from the ancient mother. My mother calls me Viewer. You can call me VJ. Salute.